Okay, now we're in the second domain of the GED language arts. Uh, this is mostly concerned with persuasion in reading texts. Okay, persuasion. It's like Thunderdome. Two texts enter, one text leaves. Okay. So when we compare and contrast two texts, you may have seen this before. I have a Venn diagram on the right. We see where they overlap. That's right there in the middle where A and B overlap each other. That means where they're the same and where they're different. So we're comparing and contrasting, seeing where they're the same and seeing where they're different. This is a large part of the exam. So in two texts, some of the things we're going to compare are scope, what, what's being talked about, and in what level of detail, the purpose, why would the author write this piece, what's their goal, do they want to convince the audience, what's the emphasis of the piece, what particular aspect of a subject is it focused on, audience, this is very important. Whenever you see writing, you have to think, well, who's the audience? The impact. How much did it influence someone? And all these things we're going to see again in social studies, so I want you to keep this in mind. Okay, The literary techniques and such that are used in these passages will be important. The point of view, which we've discussed. The tone, which we've also discussed. The style, how it's written. Okay, this all builds on things we learned in Domain 1. So if you haven't watched Domain 1, I would recommend doing so. Organization, or how the passage is constructed to get a point across. Purpose, impact, which we've talked about. The transition words. We've talked about that a little before. But these are things like therefore, because, but, in conclusion. Okay, these words matter a lot when we're looking especially at contrast. Someone might talk about one argument and say, but, therefore, and that lets you know, okay? Logic and conclusions, one, we make generalizations based on evidence. It's like CSI, but we're on the GED. You use main ideas to eventually draw conclusions, okay? So we know what the main idea is. We talked about main ideas and topic sentences, Okay, and from that, we can go, oh, well, what's the author's viewpoint and what conclusion might we draw from that? We identify evidence used to support a claim or a conclusion. Look at the evidence, usually in the detailed sentences, that supports that main idea. Determine whether evidence is relevant and sufficient. Did the author do a good job proving their point? Determine whether a statement is or is not supported. Is the author just making stuff up? This matters, okay? So you're going to have to describe the steps of an argument presented. That means you got to break it down. you got to say, so-and-so says that uh, Facebook causes many problems. He says, further, you might give some details like we did in that exercise. In conclusion, this affects young people. You've got to make sure they're connected if there's multiple steps in the argument. Okay, if I say A implies B implies C, you've got to make sure B really happened. Assess whether an argument is valid. We'll talk about this a little more in the in-depth, but we've already mentioned in the in-depth for a monkey's poor correlation and causation. Stuff of that nature. Cause and effect. Okay, identify assumptions in an argument and determine if they are supported by the evidence. You can't just make stuff up. People do that all the time, though, in arguments, especially in politics. Analyze two arguments and evaluate the types of evidence used to support each claim. Okay, we're going to talk about the types of evidence. Is the type of evidence factual? Is the type of evidence emotional or an opinion? Okay, and we're going to go into that in depth in the guided practice exercise, which I strongly recommend you watch and the in-depth, which is also very informative and assumes you have watched the previous in-depth exercise on the monkey's paw. Okay, and I'll see you next time.